Okay, if you can come on this side. All right, I need to get to the queen of New York nightlife right here, Miss Evelyn Santos. I don't know about the queen, but I'm just Evelyn. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I don't want to hear the complaints. I, I think that all of us who are here, who have been to the parties, within at least, I'd say, the last five years, we need to set an example for the new children, the new club goers who are coming out. By paying at the door, always have your money to pay at the door. I don't want to repeat about how much it costs and whatever. No, oh, right, who's at the door? That's the first question I hear. Oh, Evelyn's at the door? This one's at the door? Support the door. Support the co check people. Sometimes they depend on your tips or what you're paying. That's all they're getting. But I, mean, I think overall, we're not supporting and showing an example. Expect that from the new generation coming up. And as a promoter going out seven nights a week, rain, snow, I'm always out there. These children are hungry for the parties. And all I hear from the older ones, oh, they don't have the soul. They don't have the spirit. They don't know how to do this. They're trying. They're going to dance classes. They want to have what we have. Remember, the parties are not the way they were way back. And I go back 43 years working. When the parties were grand. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I saw a partner of mine, Ken Carpenter. Oh. <laughs> and my heart is like this right now. Okay, we came up with Bonds International. Okay, and I go back before that. All the way back. The Cheetah, I don't know if you guys know clubs. Xenons, I don't know. No, that's later, that's later. That came later. Leviticus and Nelguins and Martinique and all Cuckoo's Nest and all that came much later. Third World Gallery, all that came later. I go back when records were 78s. Okay. But um, as, as I want to say to everybody, please learn to support the door. Always have your money ready. I do. I come to the party, $20 is in my hand. If they say, Evelyn, go ahead. It's their choice. Please. You know, and the bar, well, right now the generation does not support the dancers that are supporting the bar. I do understand that. So we just have to go with the whatever is going on right now. As has been said, the cost of the club, the cost of the, the taxes and everything else going on, the promoter has nothing to do with that. But the producer of the party, the funds is on you guys. So please support and show them a lesson to the new generation coming up. Thank you. Give it up. Queen. Come on out, young man. This gentleman here. Peace, family. Kev Cruz, Mecca Digital High Five, Salsa and Soul Music. I'm a DJ, producer, dancer. I've been doing this for a long time. And some people in this room that have problem with this scene right now, as far as I see it and the solution that I can offer, reach out to the children. Right? I, I was literally 15 coming right around the corner to go up in Mars. Three floors, reggae, house, hip hop, everybody together. That's how I grew up. I could watch a video on TV, see house music, watch Ralph McDaniel, see house music, see Barbara Tucker videos, know how to dress, know how to dance, know how. This is how people learn in the media in the system, where you at people that have the ability to make these things happen, where are you, right? You want to complain about the bar and all this, I'll give my little anecdote. I was at a club in the uh, uh, 20s, just looking to open up on a Friday night because they got a good sound system, and Lord, that's all I want to play on is a good sound system. And nothing rinky-dink. I want y'all to hear my music with the boom, boom, boom. And that's what I make it for. I'm sitting there with the club owner, trying to explain to him what it is that I do and how he and I can work together. And some other young brothers look like brothers from around the way, Brooklyn, Bronx, who knows where they're from. But that's the, I'm going to give you a picture of who they are. Because these brothers came in and dropped, a, pulled out their pocket at least five Gs, cash money, 
to have their birthday party in the back room on a Friday night. So what's the problem? These brothers don't like house music because y'all are not offering them house music as an opportunity, as an alternative to whatever they would like to party to. Not because they don't like the music, it's the drum. The drum is from Africa, we don't like that, right? Because it's, they have to go and look to find it. In some kind of way, we need to bring this music to the people, to the kids. It's the only way that this is gonna work out. This is New York City, we got the money, and we have the ability. And another thing that I would like to add is that, in my opinion, my little humble opinion, the Manhattan club scene is not for New Yorkers. It's, it's uh, part of the hotel industry. It's for everybody else around. Come on. I am. Okay, I'm going to go right back over here. We have this gentleman. Uh, okay, let me let him speak, and I'm going to come to you. Hello, everybody. My name is also Kevin. Um, I am also young. I'm 27 years old. I know about the Paradise Garage because old people like yourselves talk about it. <laughs> Let me finish my sentence. Because old people like you talk about it like my grandmother talked about the old country. I have a lot of respect for where things came from, but if you just keep looking backwards, you don't look forwards. I threw, I threw a New Year's Eve party for 3,500 people in a 45,000 square foot warehouse in Brooklyn. It cost me $115,000 and I made that money back and then some. And I did that knowing that I would have to deal with possibly having the event shut down and there is nothing, no stack of permits, there is nothing you can do to effectively hedge that bet, but you have no choice but to take that risk if you want to realize your vision in New York City right now. And I unfortunately have to leave very soon, but the one thing I want to tell everyone is that if you want to change that situation, you want better legal venues, it's not as much fun as talking about the Paradise Garage or how much you love music or how much people should be paying at the door. What you need to happen is have the mayor's office and city council members' phones ringing, phoning for nightlife establishments. They're not fun things to talk about. They're not sexy. They're not exciting. But if you want better legal venues, if you want to make a difference at a very large level, you have to be willing to do those things and they're not as much fun. Otherwise, um, you know, I'll see y'all in the jail cell sometime. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> Give his number, because he made $100,000 in a night. I don't want to know him. That's a better than broken even. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Paula. Hello. Hello. I've been partying for about 20 years myself. <laughs> Don't play me. <laughs> Don't play me. <laughs> Those that know me know that I've come out and I support almost every party from the very smallest of venues to the very largest of venues. Um, and I'm here to say today that everyone's making very valid points and we're all pretty much united on the same front of wanting to see our house music go on and wanting to see it prosper. But we have to be real with ourselves, okay? And the bottom line is, it's not sexy. I mean, and I say this in the most respectful. Our music itself can carry us for 20, 30 years from now. But if you don't give the people what they want, they will not come. Okay? I myself have stopped parting, and that, for me to say that, is a huge statement. Okay? And there's various reasons for that. Um, if the DJ is tired and he's playing like he's bored, the promoters look like they're too high and they're sleeping and they don't want to do their job, you're not getting the kind of personalized service as any customer service who's paying their money should get. The hygiene in the club is coming down and down and down and down. I mean, there's no deodorant, there's no, you know, there's nothing going on right now. We can be earthy without being dirty, okay? And on top of that, 
I mean, I'm not saying we have to come in a stiletto heels. I'm not saying that every day has to be a glamour day for everybody. I did not go to the garage, but I came from the Kilimanjaro's, the tunnel, the sound factory. Big sound system, big venues, and yes, people were buying drinks. And that's another thing. As we get older, there are more things that we have to do. There's children, mortgages, and stuff like that. You forgot what it's like to be young on the weekend with a pocket full of money to blow and a party to go to. That's what it was about. And as we get older, we kind of forget that. But we don't want to forget that to the point that we lose what makes this so great. It's not just about who we are and what we are. It's what we represent when we go out to party. And so we all have to take a look in the mirror. We all have to say if we don't, if we don't got it, we shouldn't do it. And if we are going to be around and we're going to promote it to the younger people, you have to give them something they want to come out to. By going to someone looking like you didn't brush your teeth, you didn't comb your hair, and want them to come to your party, who wants to do that? I know I do not want to do that. On the same token, we have to respect the elders. We have to respect who brought us here. We have to respect how we got here. But the elders have to respect that without us, the younger people, and even the younger people, the 24, the 23, we're not going to have a party in three, four, five more years because we're going to be too old to do anything. And the younger people are not going to know about our music. So there has to be a middle ground between everyone and what we are. We have a responsibility that when we come to the club, we should be paying and giving off what we should. And when we go to the party, everyone in there, from the DJs to the promoters to everyone else, has a responsibility to us as well. All right. May not be sexy, but you are. <laughs> Hi, my name is David. <laughs> my name is David Pawpaw. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of DJs in this room. I've worked at the loft for 10 years doing the lights. One of the things that I've noticed, uh, Ms. Tucker, all right, when you were performing, back in the day, it was about the music. It was definitely about the music. We would come to hear you because we've heard stuff on the radio, all right? What I've noticed now with all the remixes that all the DJs do, there's, no, there's not a venue where artists can come out and play and sing. Uh, we need some place where we can hear someone like Barbara Tucker or the younger artists that are coming out. I understand there are a lot of quote-unquote underground remixes. We need to get stuff on the radio. Kevin, you're on the radio on what, on Friday nights? Or s Saturday nights? Friday nights. All right, you have, Ru you, have Ruben, you have Ruben who's on on Saturday night. One of the things that I remember back in the day, I mean, a lot of the music that we heard, we also heard on the radio. I mean, with all these, I'm gonna say it's the wrong thing to say, illegal remixes, we need to get the artists involved in the remixes that the DJs are doing. I look at Carlos Sanchez, I mean, he's worked with a number of people. But the, all right, what, what I'm saying is, but see, what I'm saying is, you're right, you're right, but what I'm saying is, it's a corporate mentality. All right, as much as we listen to the internet, I don't listen to the radio anymore. All the music that I listen to is on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. But what I'm saying is, is that I've had the pleasure, I mean, I worked with David Mancuso for 10 years, all right? And his whole attitude is, is let the music play itself. You have a lot of DJs out here, and I don't mean any disrespect to any of the DJs, they think it's about them, all right? But it's about the music. It's always been about the music, all right? Even Larry, it was about the music, all right? And it's like, if we get back into the music instead of everyone being ego, all right, people will come out and hear the DJ, all right? I mean, and that's what I miss about it. Give it up. 